1924, a man named Captain Howie came here to Romney Marsh to realize an ambition. It was one of those curious ambitions, the realization of which added a completely new dimension to the area. The marsh didn't exactly have a dense population, if you're counting people, not sheep, that is, but it was, and still is, a popular place with holidaymakers, and this was to be a key factor in Howie's plans. He had a passion for racing cars and railway locomotives, and not being short of cash, he came here to build his very own railway. He set up shop here, in New Romney, and together with a friend, Count Louis Borowski, he started to build what must surely be one of the most unlikely railway undertakings in the world. Unfortunately, Borowski, who also had a passion for racing cars, was tragically killed whilst competing in the Italian Grand Prix shortly afterwards. And so, Howie was left to carry on alone. The line which was to be operated by steam, was laid to a gauge of 15 inches. The locomotives, however, were to be one-third full size, and on the 15-inch gauge, that's big. The line opened for business in August 1926, although the whole of the new romney Hythes route was not completed until the following year. In all, it cost Howie about £110,000, a fabulous sum in those days, with a staple diet of holiday makers and the stringent twenties giving way to the thirties, the railway prospered. Howie had conceived his railway as a main line in miniature, and that's just how it's always been. The timetable is intensive, the trains run fast, and a high degree of operating expertise is required. The double track of the Romney Hythe and Dimchurch runs roughly northeastwards from its principal base at New Romney, via St Mary's Bay and Dimchurch, to a terminus in the busy town of Hythe. It's about eight and a half miles, and the very first time you ride the train, you realise what Captain Howe was getting at. This is certainly no meandering branch line. We even get a buffet car. It's a very level route, which enables the haulage of long and heavy trains, but the line has more than its share of level crossings. It runs parallel to the coast, and nearly all roads to the sea have to cross the track somewhere. 
The level crossings, once a source of danger in the days before flashing lights, are now merely an expensive addition to the operating costs. The principal stations on the line must be considered extravagant affairs by today's standards, but they, like everything else about the RH&D, are part of the original attention to detail that enabled Howie so successfully to create his main line atmosphere. The quiet waters of the disused military canal herald our arrival at Hythe. The grand terminus of the railway. With no less than four platforms under the canopy, it's impressive by any standards. Behind the neat signal box, the second of the line's turntables and a small engine shed. Here the locomotive is turned and serviced in readiness for the 13-mile slog that will take it to the westernmost extremity of the line, Dungeness. The signalling was originally of the semaphore type, but the only examples to survive are here at Hythe, the remainder having been replaced by modern colour lights. Not even this railway is immune from the economies of modernisation.
In fact, with the heavy burden of track renewal and a considerable full-time staff to support, Howie's Little Railway has been suffering all the same financial ills as its big brother. The locomotives were designed by Henry Greenley, and connoisseurs of these matters will tell you that they were the best he ever designed. Built by Davy Paxman of Colchester, most of them date from the original opening of the line nearly 50 years ago. The fleet consists of five Pacifics of the LNER type, all dating from the 1925 to 1927 period. Two 482s of the same vintage, the only 482s ever to run in Britain, incidentally, and two Canadian-type Pacifics built by the Yorkshire Engine Company in 1931. The only recent addition has been a further Pacific imported from Germany. The romney Highland dimchurch Railway is a completely self-contained engineering unit. Its extensive workshops at New Romney are able to tackle everything from boiler repairs to the building of passenger coaches. Every driver has his own engine on which he either carries out or supervises all running repairs. It's an old-fashioned system, but one which produces the highest standards of mechanical turnout. One well-known Romney driver spent 19 years with the same engine. The section of line from New Romney to Dungeness sees much lighter traffic than the Hythe line, and a single track suffices. Gone are the meadows and dikes of the marsh proper, as the railway strikes out across a barren and beachy headland to bring it to a terminus hard by the lighthouse at Dungeness. The station here is situated on a large reverse loop, so that engines don't need to turn. The trains simply pass round the loop and head back towards New Romney. The rails on this section suffer particularly from their constant exposure to the salty sea air, and the whole problem of track renewal has now become pressing. There have certainly been recent speculations about the total closure of the railway, and although this seems unlikely, there's a real prospect of the double track section being reduced to a single track. That this would irreparably spoil Captain Howe's unique little railway is undeniable, but maybe it's preferable to some of the grimmer alternatives. <laughs> Captain Howe died in 1963, and according to his last wish, his ashes were scattered here in the station yard of his beloved Romney. The line was taken over first by two bankers, 
and then by a public company. But since Howe's death, it has struggled from one financial crisis to another. As the day nears its end, and the staff attend to the shunting, berthing, cleaning and multitude of other tasks to prepare for another busy day, the question mark still hangs over the line's future. It's been the delight of generations of boys, both young and old, as fascinating a railway as you'll find anywhere. Come to Romney and ride the train. That's the only way to ensure the survival of Captain Howe's little railway, the biggest little railway in the world. <laughs> 